Hello, everyone. You are listening to Those Other Girls with Mallory and Friends. I'm Mallory. And I'm Freeman. And we are changing culture and bringing back traditional values. Amen. Woo! Let's do this. Okay, so if you're watching on YouTube, your eyes do not deceive you. This is a live recording. Um, live. Well, in person, that's what I mean. It's always live. Mm -hmm. uh, well, not well, you guys know what I'm saying. But anyway, this is in person. Mm -hmm. You guys, this is Freeman. She Hi. is our new executive director Woo -woo. of Those Are the Girls. Um, she's been on before, and you've seen her on social media, I'm yeah. sure. I posted her on the page and everything. So I'm just really excited. We have a regular tea cap, and we have our um, trendy iced coffees. Yes. Aren't they so trendy? Some, yes. I love these. These are so cute. Mason jars, if you're listening, like I do. Yes. Yes, they're in mason jars, and they'll be perfect for our um, clink to share some tea oh, yeah. or to get serious and talk about some coffee. I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay. Um. Anyway, how was your week? Oh, my week has been good. Um. For those of you who don't know, I do DoorDash. Ooh. So I've been making good money. I don't know how because it's been really sunny and nice here in Charlotte. Usually when it's sunny, I don't make any money because really? people are going. Yeah, they're going out, but. See, I made like $130 last night. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't realize DoorDash um, could get you that much. Yeah, I have a few mixed emotions about the org and its whole okay. philosophy. I think it's been like one of those organizations that's like, we'll ship you off to get an abortion, you know? Um, so I'm kind of having to like think about that. Yeah. But I'm grateful for what I do have and definitely praying that they have a change of heart. Yeah, yeah. I I guess I only really use DoorDash. I was going to say sometimes use Uber Eats. Mm -hmm. but I only really use Uber Eats with other people. Like if someone else yeah. has it, I don't really use DoorDash. Yeah, I'm and then there's Grubhub. Which oh, there is Grubhub. There but nobody uses. Oh, really? I feel like nobody uses Grubhub. Well, I wouldn't know. I'm on the receiving yeah. end. That's true. Um. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm the help in a yeah, way. Okay. You help a lot of people. I mean... I've gotten better, but there was one point I was doing, oh, when I lived in D.C. for, like, that six weeks, yeah. like, two mm -hmm. years ago, um, we were door dashing, like, every day almost. Yeah. My mom was so convenient. My mom was saying, like, if she had it while she was a single mom, like, the amount of time and effort she would save, we would literally go on her 15-minute breaks, she worked from home, and, like, go to the gas station and run back, and that was, like, dinner. Yeah. DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats. What else is there? I'm sure there's another one. They there have to be more. They save people's lives, literally. I know, but also. But at the same time, like, you shouldn't be spending that money. Like, yeah, you should save the money. Because I've thought about that. There were times where, like, it was maybe a $10 meal and I spent, like, oh, $25 yeah. I, I made, <laughs> just to have it come. I made, like, $10 delivering one large fry from McDonald's. That is to oh, someone's apartment funny. and i was like that is an amazing life if that... you could just give some kid 10 bucks to go run a large fry up to your high rise in uptown the Charlotte. only time i've ever like done it living back home mm -hmm. is when it's like raining really hard yes. and i just don't That's want what to I make drive bank. yeah oh and you'll go out there in the rain oh the totally i make such charlotte is so bad though with the i don't know if you uh, no we're not friends on facebook um but not because we don't want yeah, to yeah i just but, don't do facebook. yeah yeah after that i was like that came out wrong. <laughs> we're anyway. not friends on facebook or instagram <laughs> We're just professional. <laughs> yeah. I just came to her apartment yeah. and said, you got to do it here. But no, um, a couple of weeks ago on Facebook, I posted about um, when it rains really bad in Charlotte, you can't see the lines. Have you yes, noticed that? I have noticed that. I'm not even joking. I'm going to send something to the city council. <laughs> it's a, I just need to sit down and like write it. Because like, when you think it's so bad. And then like the lanes are switching because there's yes. construction. Yeah. And you can't see. I don't know if any of you, it's like that in your town, but like you literally cannot see yeah. in Charlotte. They're already hard to see. Yeah. Add, but as soon as you add the rain, yeah. and I was on Reddit, I'm a Reddit girly now. I um, love Reddit, especially the Charlotte Reddit. Um, There's so much. Reddit has whack stuff. It does, but like that's how I know about what's going on. So someone else posted about it that same night on in Reddit. So, um, and, and they took a picture of it. So I was like, okay, I took, I screenshotted the picture. And I was like, okay, I'm going to remember this because yeah, it is so bad. The committee needs to know about it. Seriously. As soon as it starts raining and it's night, 
forget it. Like yeah. you're sitting here like this and you're like, you have to look at other people, make sure they're, and I remember driving home. I was I went out to get on with friends and I was um, driving home, leaving uptown. We went to, um, what's that place? It's near, I don't know, somewhere in South End. Um, South End is fun. Yeah. It's a good area to like, have fun in, but like, it, I don't like the parking. You know, I don't, I don't do parking. And I, if I cannot find parking, I will leave. <laughs> I will leave, and I've done that before. I, I cannot stand parallel parking. <laughs> I don't like park. That's I will say. She I've, has canceled plans. I have canceled plans. She has shown up. I've shown up. Well. I, I have. I've shown up to where it is. I'm thinking about specific time now. I show. I drove. I probably <laughs> drove around thirty minutes, and I was like, you know, what? I'm done. Like I'm. She's I can't like. Do this. She's like. I'm sick. Yeah. I can't. No. No. I told them I was like. Couldn't find parking. I'm just gonna go home. Oh, okay. So yeah, no, I was told them. I, okay. I said I'm, I can't find. And they're like, Are you sure? I'm like, Yeah, I can't find parking, so I will go home. <laughs> Let me know when you're done and you want to go somewhere with reasonable parking. Um, that. yeah. So okay, so I was driving home and it was raining and you could not see the lane because mm, yeah, it's, like we need reflectors. I don't understand why we don't have reflectors. Yeah, but we don't have the reflectors. And I looked, I was driving and I was like looking around and I noticed everybody else was doing the same thing, like trying to figure out like, are, am I in the lane? So yeah. I was like praying until I got to the highway. Once you get to the highway, it's better. But like right in that yeah, area, just in streets. the yeah, it's terrible, you guys, terrible. So I'm gonna write something to city council and just be like, you guys need to fix this. This is well, not okay. those other girls will be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe we can get like a petition going. Honestly. <laughs> so what do you have for us today? Anyway, yes. Yeah. So before we get into the story, we have some amazing stories. Um, not Well, they're, ama- they're interesting stories. Mm. Um, I want to go over some announcements. The first announcement is we've announced it. First announcement is an announcement. Mm-hmm. Um, we've told everybody already, but the other girls tea party we are having, it is going to be April 15th. We're so excited. It's going to be so fun. Seriously. If you live in the Virginia. If you live in the United States. If you live in the United (laughs) States, you can figure out how to get there. Come. It's going to be so fun. Um, We're going to have. um, Tea, scones, sandwiches. Yeah. We're going to have. Speakers. We're going to announce some speakers. We're going to have giveaways. Some really cool giveaway stuff. You're going to want to be there. And. Um. The outfit vibe, things like selkie dresses, so like that princess fairy look. And if that's not for you, still come. We love you. You're part of our group. Yes, you absolutely. You're still welcome. Are still welcome. And you don't have to wear pink. Yeah, I, don't I wear pink. like white. Yeah, you know something still feminine, but like I don't know if you're like me and pink isn't like your absolute like go to. You are still welcome here. We love you, and we will make merch for you. Yes. I will be wearing pink though, just an obviously. FYI, obviously, but you do not have to wear pink. Um, and then also, if you have not, you should join the Patreon. If you had joined the Patreon, you would have been able to get early access to the tickets and you would have been able to get a free ticket. I um, didn't know that. Yes. Everybody on the Patreon had early access and could have gotten a free ticket. Did I? Well, we'll talk about that later. Okay. <laughs> I joined up um, late in the game. That's fine. Um, and then also we're going to do on, by the time this comes out, I don't know if we'll be posted yet, but eventually we'll have a meet Freeman. We'll be able to get an exclusive access to learning a little bit more about Freeman. Not, you don't get exclusive access to learning about Freeman. (laughs) Exclusive access to learning about, about yeah, sorry. Exclusive access to learning about Freeman, (laughs) like who she is and her likes and interests. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah, that's all the announcements we're going to go over right now. If you guys have any merch ideas or oh, fun yes. slogans, we could use them. Let us know. Email, DM, however. Is there, what's your favorite Mal quote? Yes. Send it to us. Yes. The nice ones. <laughs> One of my um, friends told me that. I say this excessively, and I don't mean to, but now I notice it. I say also to a lot. Really? And I notice it. Oh, now that's, that's adorable. Out. I Thank love also to. Thank you, I think Freeman. that's adorable. Thank you. Thank you. That would be a cute little, that would be a cute Also to, you think so? That would be. I just say it. I didn't realize how much I said it until she pointed it out. She was like, I'm not trying to like be a, it's just something I noticed. And I was like, okay. No, don't be, don't be so No, conscious. I, but I, I do say it a lot. I, 
realize. It's but cute. I think that's cute. I it's think part of my vernacular. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I guess that's it. So I guess are you ready for some good tea? Oh yeah, I am so ready. We have some really cool stories and even we have some of my husband's two cents. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm excited then. All right. Yes. Are you ready then? Let's do it. <laughs> All right. We got the clink in real life. Okay. So first story, it is from Evie Magazine. I'm going to read with my phone like this because um, when I was younger, I would take my glasses off to read. Um, even though I needed them to see. And for those who can't see, her oh, phone yeah. is two inches from her nose. Yeah, and you're not supposed to do this, but whenever I would read, I'd take my glasses off, so now it's like a habit. Um, so it's going to be really in my face, so I apologize. Okay, so <laughs> this is from Evie Magazine. Uh, Zendaya allegedly has a no nudity clause in her contract, and this is why she won't get naked on camera. Zendaya is one of Hollywood's most loved it girls. She's a fashion icon, a tremendous actress, and can even sing and dance. One thing that sets her apart from her peers is the fact that she doesn't do nudity on camera, and this might be the reason why. In Euphoria, Zendaya's co-star Sydney Sweeney has been nude in certain episodes, but she's allegedly asked to reduce the number of naked scenes that she's a part of. We've talked about this that part before. However, Zendaya has a lost my place. However, Zendaya apparently has a strict no nudity clause in all of her contracts. TikToker Charles Perlo, who comes up on my YouTube all the time, oh. broke it down and told his followers that this is partly due to the fact that Zendaya started her career as a popular Disney child star. She mm-hmm. started acting in Disney channels, Shake It Up as the Rocky Blue. She was only 14. She acted alongside Bella Thorne and left the role in 2013. There are plenty of child stars who started in Disney and have gone to do nudity, but there are also some who have attempted to maintain some modesty as they exit the Disney phase. Zendaya has said that she doesn't want to be nude for personal reasons, but many think it goes deeper into the fact that she's a child star turned adult star. (laughs) That Hmm. sounds weird. And actors like this usually try to steer clear of nudity to avoid the issue of people preying on child actors and try to push them to do mature ro- roles before they're ready. Um, so, wow. I like that. Um, good for Zendaya. For sure. For sure. And I think it's also interesting, because like I said, we talked about Sydney Sweeney a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. probably a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, her doing, wanting to do less nudity. So it's interesting that, and it, Sydney Sweeney's, okay, so I don't watch the show. I tried to watch the show. Do you watch it? No. I tried to watch the show. It is too much. Like, I love the vibe. The music was cool. Wait, what's too much? Euphoria. But what's it, what's too much about it? It's like sex all the time. Got it. Got and there's it. like, you'll be watching and then, oh, there's a penis. Like, it's just yeah. too much. Yeah. So I, I tried to, because everyone was talking about it. Like, what yeah. is everyone talking about? Could not get past the second, the first half of the second episode. I hate much. that. That happens a lot to me. Yes, and um, but I did notice like the trajectory of Sydney Sweeney's um, career because she had also mentioned how she feels like she's not really getting paid a lot, mm. and then she's the one who's doing kind of boob scenes, and then we know Zendaya is getting paid. Like, let's yeah, be she is twenty million dollars. Yeah, she's getting paid. So Zendaya is not hurting on cash, but she's saying she doesn't. So I just think that's so interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily know if they have anything to do with each other. Yeah. But it just makes me think like um, the contrast is really. Prevalent. Yeah. And I'm also wondering, I, I'm thinking like Cindy probably feels like she has to do these For things. Sure. And Zendaya has established herself and she knows yeah. and she can say, okay, in my contract, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And I think that as we get older, because you can kind of apply that to a bunch of other jobs too. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you feel like you have to, okay, got to listen to this boss or you got to yeah. do X, Y, and Z. Um, because you know, that's what you're going to do. And then when you get more established, you don't have to, yeah. I think this is just a good example of, well, if you don't want to do something, if it's something that goes against your morals something that goes against your character, then yeah. just don't do it. God will reward you. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think about this? So I think I just want to start off. We do not by any means think Zendaya is like a saint or anyone that needs to be worshiped. No. She is definitely. I do love her. I think she's pretty. She but... is so pretty. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's a great but she has been known to come out and support, quote-unquote, re- reproductive rights. 
Um, I know that she was not a fan of the Dobbs decision. She's been seen at women's marches yes. and things like that. So we're not saying that she is by any means perfect, but this is a really cool kind of trajectory that maybe people are starting to... That's what I'm hoping. This path has started. And it doesn't have to be, I mean... For a lot of people, it is a secular thing. It's yeah. like them just not comfortable. Yeah. But we see that as a conscience. Yeah. Which is God given. Yes. So yeah. Maybe she can start in like a secular sense, normalizing modesty. Yeah. And then Christians over here can also be cheering her on. Yeah. And I think this is something that we definitely, okay, this is a good example of yeah. something good going on in Hollywood. So like, let's yeah. encourage this. Because honestly, there's so many shows that, and I'm sure I've said this a thousand times, there's so many shows that would just be so perfect they didn't have that yes. scene. All you have to do is just do, you know, they can run to the bed and then fade out. Yeah. And then, ah, we yeah. get it. We get, we're yeah. smart enough. For we can sure. put two and two together. You don't have to show it. Yeah. Um, so I think it'll be good if this is the direction that they're going in. I th- um. There was also Pim Baglia, mm. the guy from You, who just recently said he didn't say nudity. Yeah. He said he wanted to do less sex scenes. Yeah. There's, um, yeah, there's there anyone else, but there's other people who said yeah. it, I'm sure. So I think this is a good trajectory. Yeah. So, you guys, do you think this is the direction that celebrities want to go into, or do you think this is these are just kind of like random flukes? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Let us know. Another question: Is there ever an okay time for sex scenes? There, I feel like there are some people who might say, hmm, well, a question. if we're going to talk about, like, somebody who has some kind of problem and the goal is to be out there and scary, then maybe some people would say, if it's an artistic choice to show a body hmm. or to show something intimate, is that an artistic choice? Is it ever effective? So... That's a good question. I know that that was kind of, um, oh goodness, what was that movie? It's the movie about, I think it's Redeeming Love. I think that's the name of the movie. Okay. It's a Christian movie. Mm -hmm. And I think they went a little, people thought they went a little far. It's Mm -hmm. based on a book. Okay. That is based on, I want to say Habeka. Hmm. I should have, we should watch that. Oh, we should watch it and review it for the other podcast. Oh, Um, oh, that would be fun. It is based on Jose, Jose. Um, The book, a biblical story in Hosea when uh, Gomer married a prostitute. Okay. Um, And I think there was like, I don't remember the full story, but also here's the other thing. What I think is too much might not be what yeah. so thinks is too much because sure. I remember people were saying, "Oh my gosh, I, it had eleven percent on Rotten Tomatoes." Was oh. it that bad? Oh, now I really want to watch it. Um, it's probably because it was Christian, probably. Well, <laughs> that, well, here's the thing though. That's like that was part of the thing. People were upset because they thought it went too far. Oh, in some moments. But what is too far? Like I think what I think is too far might not be sure what my mom thinks is too yeah. far. For example. So I guess that also depends on, like, I think we can all, someone butt naked, mm-hmm. and then they zoom in the camera in. Okay, that, mm-hmm. I think we can all say, like, that is yeah. Yeah. a little far. Uh, no, that's, that's far. Mm-hmm. Not even a little, that's far. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess maybe, like, a little shoulder thing. Okay. Like, and, you know, the music playing. Is that too far? I know my mom would be like, hmm, what is this? And we were started watching something <laughs> like that. I don't know. Are you sure you should be watching that? Yeah. Um, so I guess it just depends. But... Your question about the artistic aspect, I go back and forth. I definitely am a, like, nudity, for the sake of nudity, ridiculous, sure. stupid. Yeah. Um, if you're portraying, like, um, but I guess I'm thinking, like, if you're trying to portray someone has been sexually assaulted mm. and it's supposed to be a movie about, maybe it's based on a true story mm. and, um, you have to get to the, you have to show that it was kind of brutal and mm-hmm. like it was painful. Like half of me is like, it's art. Sometimes you have to, but the other half of me is like, I guess it's, but I don't know. Like I wouldn't do it and I wouldn't want my spouse to sure. do it. But then it's like, I guess you don't have to show it, but then 
I guess sometimes you have to, to like get the point across. I think in the context of like that, if it's like a documentary or yeah. if it's like based on a true story, yeah. but I think just like, Oh, these are high schoolers sleeping around. No, oh, no, no, that's no, no, no. not appropriate. It sounds like, and I don't know what the viewers think, but it sounds like you're a little more conservative than me because I really don't have a problem seeing like, I think sometimes it can convey like vulnerability mm. to see like a naked woman or something, but I think it definitely can take away, especially these like ridiculous vulgar sex scenes yeah like i i saw one that they were like shooting a porno like uh, like it was a movie that was a movie about someone shooting a porno was it like, pearl i don't even remember okay that is a, i see clips of that i want to see the movie but it just looks so yeah I like mean, it's like and then you're sitting there with like your family yeah so. that's no, I am no. absolutely against that. It is so disgusting. I I, I get so angry. Yeah. Like, I get and it's so unnecessary. Repulsed. It doesn't have, a lot of times it doesn't have anything to do with the plot. Yeah. I will say it does, if they're shooting a porno, so I guess it does have to do with the plot. But, like, most times But, like, it I doesn't. don't need to actually you don't, see yeah. this, like, ridiculous thing. Yeah. Well, let us know what you guys think. Yeah. Is there ever, is there ever also, time? So, I'm also thinking about those like roman statues yeah that are naked. Sure. yeah i mean that's is that appropriate body. yeah is that and that's our god given yeah body. yeah uh, that's a good point i guess i mean i guess like like it doesn't make sense to be completely against all of it all together because i'm thinking of the roman statues but i guess it's within the right context yeah. i've never thought to that level degree because i'm always just thinking about how to first of all Best example I think of. The first time I really started noticing this is how to get away with murder. Mm. There were so many unnecessary cuts to sex. And you said it. Sex sells. It does. And that's why people do it. I mean, and I think that's why, like, Euphoria and shows like that have gone so far. Is because when they were just doing the little close the bedroom thing. And it's on, It was shocking already. Well... Euphoria is on HBO. But I mean, like, it's so accessible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, this used to be, like... Only HBO and, like, yes. after midnight. Something yes. like that. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Hmm. So, what were you saying? I was just saying, like, How to Get Away with Murder just had all these unnecessary yeah. ones. This really has me thinking. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I my take is, like, default human body is beautiful. It can convey vulnerability, it can convey yeah. honesty, it can convey intimacy, and that's good, but... And art. Yeah. Yeah. But when it's just unnecessary. Totally. Hmm. Okay, what's our next? Let us know, you guys. Totally, yes. Um. Okay, so the next story... Um, what time? Okay. I was debating whether we should um talk about this or not, but I think we have time. Okay, I want to play this clip. It is this clip that's going viral. Um, so you guys know Sierra that has the love up, love up. That's her. Mm. Um, and she's married to the football player Russell Wilson. She has this new song. I'll play a clip. Um, one second. Okay, I'm gonna do it from okay. Can you um, play it for me a cappella? Play the girls for me a cappella up front on the first half, and then the second half, drop the beat in. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, okay. Um, all right. So, I wanted to play that clip because, like I said, it's Sierra. She's married to Russell Wilson, a yes. Christian football yes. player that's pretty famous. Um, and <laughs> I just think it's so funny. And everybody, a lot of people pointed it out. Let me see if I can find some of the funny things. She's saying for the girl that's independent, she's married to a very successful man. Um, and she was saying, uh, what else did she say? She said, the girl that's independent. Oh, the girls that don't need no man. Once again, she's married to a very successful man. So it's just very interesting that that's the vibe. And then I'm going to read some of these comments and then I'm going to say my two cents. 
really quick. Okay, so someone said, LOL, the R&B and rap girls begin in the studio promoting women to be single and alone after they go home to their man. Um, why do kept um, a word housewives with rich men always want to push independence as if they really live like that? Uh, this person says, Sierra, I'm not listening to this because I need a man. And then <laughs> someone said, you're going to go home to your man, girl, F you. Oh, so <laughs> let me see. Uh, another one that says, happily married women making single woman music is my favorite genre of irony. Oh, um, I, could, I like that one. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, um... That, oh, someone said the audacity with her big ring on her finger. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Okay, so I think, like, okay, I get what she's trying to say. Because, all right, there's two sides to this coin. Um, and, okay, I get what she's trying to say. Mm -hmm. But I also do think, like, I personally don't like to hear stuff about, like, I'm not going to listen to her because realistically i'd rather go, everybody would rather go her route like marry someone super rich and she doesn't have to do any of this music she can just lay at home and be a house mm -hmm. like and she has beautiful kids like she's i don't know why she's doing that so yeah. realistically it, everybody would want to go the route that she took my thing is when you are single and when you are excuse me, sorry, when you're single and when you're young ish mm -hmm. um Sometimes you have to make sure you're balancing, like, being okay with yourself and not hating men. Yeah. And that's a yeah. really tough line to walk. And, like, I joke about it all the time. Men suck, blah, blah, blah. I have a um, Spotify album titled Men Suck, but that's not really how I feel. Like, I do, do you think, think she's saying men suck? I think she's kind of trying to encourage, like, purposely be independent as opposed okay. to being independent. So, like, okay, so there's a difference between, like, being independent because... You can be independent within marriage. You can be independent within marriage. You can be independent because those are the circumstances you're in. Mm -hmm. And then you can purposely be independent because you just think that um, you're just better off by yourself. Which is kind of, I've heard people say, like, kind of almost a trauma response anyway. But that's a whole mm -hmm. other conversation. Whoa. But you can be independent and kind of feel like you're like kind of be bitter I guess mm -hmm. I don't know how else to say it like yeah. kind of be bitter so and that's the vibe you're getting and that's the vibe I'm getting from her it sounds like you're getting a different vibe I don't know all I heard was like independence that's the, yeah and okay like, independence is a good thing what does that what do you what do you mean by that yeah so, and the thing is like the idea that like we don't need men is not true sure it is just hard when you don't I, the thing is it's hard when you don't yeah. have one because you want to say i can do this on my own which yeah. you can i mean it's possible people do it all the time mm -hmm. but it is easier with someone there with you mm -hmm. and technically you don't have it doesn't have to be a man i'm not saying you know marry your best friend mm -hmm. what i'm saying is like we can all help each other community that's what you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they work together, example of us working together as a community. Yeah. But um, that's a long way of me saying uh -huh. that, like, the difference, I think, is when you are, when you're single and, like, but she's not single, but she's, this is for single people, obviously. Yeah. When you're single and you've been single for a really long time and you are independent, you just have to make sure you're not crossing that line right. of, like, men suck and being... Well, you can be self-reliant. But I mean in, like, a Christian sense. Yeah, like, yeah. You are you the community. way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. For sure. And we should never put our trust in ourselves. No. We should never rely solely on ourselves. Yeah. And I totally see why that seems that way. Yeah. And I, I like, I, it's just a hard spot to be in because, and I'll say specifically for myself, it's hard for me to even talk about like women should get married, not because I don't think women should get married, but because, or like mm. women should get married young, blah, blah, blah. Not because I don't think that it's just, I look stupid. I'm 28. Like I can't just sit here and be like, yeah, girls, like don't go to college. Just mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Sure. Cause I'm sorry. And no shade to people who do that, but like you look yeah. fake. Cause it's mm -hmm. like, you're not living that life, but yeah. you're saying, and sometimes it's not your fault. I'm, well, actually I'll say this. Most people who are single 
when they're older, it's not their fault because mm-hmm. if God hasn't brought the person totally. to you, then God totally. hasn't brought the person to you. Maybe that's just, you're just a different path. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, I think it's just a reminder to do that balance. What do you guys think? Do you think that, like, are you thinking she's kind of mean it in a, like, a, I'm independent, I don't need no man, mm-hmm. um, or in, like, the bitter way, or do you think she just means it in, like, a, oh, I'm just independent, like, yeah. I can't help it. I took it, and it seems like everybody else took it, uh, or not everybody else, because there was a couple people who agreed with what she said, mm-hmm. but I feel like a lot of people took it as, like, the bitter way, only because, mm-hmm. like, and it just feels, just like how if I were to go up there and say, yeah, girls, like, get married totally. at 21, how totally. I would feel like a hypocrite, I hope she feels like a hypocrite, too. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't need a man. Yeah. You've got one, like, yeah. and then what and he's a traditional husband. Feel? I know. And he's a traditional husband. He's yeah. a Christian man, which is also weird. But that's a whole nother. Did he have like something where he was really cheated on, like horribly, with one of his his first wife? Maybe, maybe. Yeah. maybe. Because I feel like he's one of those really nice. Yeah, he's one of those really nice, good totally. Christian men that like um isn't around probably, shade. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like one of the ones you don't hear. You don't you hear a lot about her, but you don't hear a lot about him. Yeah. And, like he seems to be a really nice gentleman. Handsome. Well, he needs to too. respond. Yeah. He needs to, I feel like How do you feel about this, Russell? Let us know. Yeah, I know you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like he could go two ways. I could see him saying, I support my wife. I think every human being should be independent at some level. Yeah. And he could go that way. Or he could, or he could say, yeah, this was weird to me, um, but I still love my wife. Yeah. Russell, let us know. Yeah, but he's not probably not going to if he disagrees with it. But. Yeah. Okay, what's next? All right. The next story is brought to you by American Woman Beauty. These are beauty product beauty products <laughs> for the free thinking woman. American Woman Beauty was founded on the idea that all women, men, and children deserve high quality beauty products, grooming, and hygiene that are made in the USA. They are, all of the products are cruelty free and not tested on animals. So let's support a business that supports our values. You can listen to episode 180 where I interview the founder and you can head over to AmericanWomanBeauty.net. Use the code MAL15 to get 15% off your purchase. Okay. So this next one, I cannot imagine us disagreeing on. No. So that is good. Yeah. I'm so excited for this next one. Um, This is the one Andy had some stuff to say. Nice. Andy's her husband. Yes. By the way, not just some random that she acts on the side of the street. Yeah. Someone she knows and loves. I do know him. Um, Okay. (laughs) I was going to say something. But anyway. Okay. So this is from the AP News. Um, And. Is that Associate Press? Yes. Who? Yeah, not the I, Patreon. There's yeah, tea. yeah, there's, there's tea. some tea with Associated Press. I hmm, didn't even good catch. Anyway, the Associated Press News dot com. CNN Don Lemon's regret saying Nikki Haley is past her prime. Mm. Don Lemon startled some colleagues on CNN's morning show Thursday with this implication that the Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley at fifty one was past her prime. Lemon's with CNN This Morning co-hosts Poppy Harlow and Caitlin Collins was discussing Haley's suggestion a day earlier that politicians over the age of 75 should be subjected to mandatory mental competency tests. President Joe Biden is 80, while another GOP presidential candidate, former President Donald Trump, is 76. Hmm. Mm -hmm. She said 75, everyone. Yes. Quote, Nikki Haley isn't in her prime. Sorry, Lemon said explaining why he was uncomfortable with the age decision. When a woman is considered to be in her prime, in her 20s, 30s, and maybe her 40s, end quote. Prime for what, Harlow replied. That's the question. Lemon said, if you look it up on Google, a woman is considered to be in her prime at those ages. Harlow tried to clarify what Lemon was referencing. Quote, I think we need to qualify. Are you talking about prime for childbearing or are you talking about prime for being president? Bam. And then he goes, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just saying what the facts are. Google, Google it. it. <laughs> so 
know. I know, I know. Savage. Um, and I just want to say, if you follow either one of us, you probably know how we feel about this person running for president. Yep. We will not endorse anybody right now. Not that you're like waiting for our endorsement. Yes. As I was saying, I was like, that sounds so much bigger than it is. The hey. podcast has not officially endorsed anyone, but mm-hmm. if you follow us, you know what we say. Mm-hmm. Um, anywho, you want to go first. So, yes. So, Andy and I were talking a lot about this, and I think I would say it's just really disheartening that supposedly a female candidate is past her prime of being a president. But let's let's look at what the word prime means. Yes. Let's let's look at Because if I think of prime 20s, 30s, 40s, I think childbearing prime. Yeah. So, if I'm not qualified... To childbear for whatever reason, I can't run for president. Yeah, that that's really messed up to me. And I honestly think that Nikki Haley is in the sweet spot of age. I would just want to say really quick. Yeah, I think that the best time for a woman to do a role like this would be after her kids have exactly, grown up. exactly. So but like her, her like decay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not that we have presidents that are decaying or anything but yes no you're right like now is the time her child Mm -hmm. has grown up is about to enter a whole new season she's old enough to have experience yeah she has yeah so like now it would be the time it's just so interesting that he said that and like my first thought and i hope this isn't wrong i don't mean to offend anybody my first thought was how would he know he's gay? That was oh, my first thought. Oh. I don't know if you knew that Don Lemon was I gay. I did not. I mean, the neither. <laughs> I said that, and I don't think it was either my mom or my dad didn't know. And I was like, yeah. So that's why I was like, how did you yeah. know? Yeah. Also, aren't you supposed to be pro woman? Like, I'm sorry. Like, exactly. So it's, it's just not a good look no. in, any, in any case for a man to attack a woman. Whether or not it's fair, which I don't think it is here, right? it is not a good look no. for a man to attack a woman. And I'm shooketh that he said that on camera. It was so like, <laughs> it's just not, he said it so casually, like it was like something that you kind of just say, yeah. which Ooh. I was like, oh, wow. Cringe. Okay. That's cringe. Yeah. Um, um, so. I just, I also want to say, Let's talk about the fact that the current leader of the free world is 80. And then the former, <laughs> the former leader of the free world is 77. Okay, the average age of death in America is like 75. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. No, so- 77. Excuse me. 77. Trump is currently 76 and Biden is 80. If Biden were reelected, he would be in his mid to late 80s. That is so crazy. Um, like, does about- John Lemon have a, a statement about that? Yeah, like that feels <laughs> past your prime. Yeah, that oh, that's so sad. Nineties kind of feels past your prime. Yeah, that's that's so sad. Saying that she's past, I, and, and that's just so weird. Like, if we had met, like maybe her season, because you know there was a time where she was like super popular, she was everywhere. Mm. If he had said it, maybe that's like valid. that. Okay, fair. Like, valid. you know, she maybe fell off. Not mm-hmm. recently, because, like, we kind of knew she was going to run for president, so, like, she was kind of ramping back up. But, yeah, sure, if you can say she fell off for a little bit. But, like, using the word prime, yeah. just like, wow, okay. And then I just want to end with this. So Andy mentioned um, that he believes most attacks on Nikki Haley actually benefit her. And he oh, was saying like that's that. why he doesn't believe Trump or um Jean, or uh Santos yeah has said anything really that negative about her because attacking a woman only oh, benefits does. her yeah it does it speaks society. for itself yeah kind of. that's a good point that is a really good point that's and I think that's why sometimes um, people are quiet about totally. stuff because you don't want to. Because I mean, she made her turn her lemon into lemonade. She has mm. these little stickers that say "In my prime," which I ordered one. Oh my gosh, does she really? Yeah, if you go to the website, this thing say "In my prime." I ordered okay, one. Okay, what? Yeah, yeah, she already has that. She also has like one thing about like um, it hurts if you kick with a heel. Yeah, yeah, something like that. She's a lot of sassy saying yeah i know i love it i know that um 
So if you listen to other people, they're like, oh, she shouldn't lean too much into that. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I like it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm her target market probably. So mm-hmm. she's target. I'm ding. You hit me. Like yeah. <laughs> I'm targeted. I love that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, so I have a group chat with um, my brother and one of his friends that we talk about stuff like this. And he was saying how like some of the older Republicans are not going to like that, which is, I'm I get sure. That. Like I feel like my dad is going to, be like okay i'm a little bit cringed by the heel thing yeah i love it Mm -hmm. i'm like yes that's right but once again Mm -hmm. ding you hit me i'm the target market Mm -hmm. like i'm eating it all up please continue i love it yeah um when she did the whole i was listening to if you guys ever do you ever listen to breaking point i think you would like it okay um it's they do political commentary and like the girl um, she's a Democrat and the guy is oh, a Republican and they fun. do really good. And I think, yeah. And I think they do a really good job of like not talking over each that's other. Great. It's really oh good. Gosh. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so I was listening, actually, never mind. I kind of didn't hear what you said. And then I said, yes. And then I realized no, I said like us, we like us. Talk yes. Over yes. Each other, like, oh, all the time. unlike us. Okay. That's not what I meant. But no, it, we, it's fine. We're just passionate. Yes. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> breaking point, they were, like, teasing her. Uh, they were, like, making fun of, like, Nikki Haley. And the guy was like, yeah, I remember when she said the thing where she raised her hand, when she was like, uh, she had all that publicity for saying, like, I'm sorry, I don't get confused. And, and yes. I have a sticker that says that on my laptop. And I think I have a shirt. Wait, I and to, I was I like, that had a chokehold. Yeah, look it up. I was like, that had a chokehold over us, like, young Republican women. Like, we were like, oh, this is so great. Yes. I have a sticker. I'm pretty sure I have a t-shirt that says that. With all due respect, yes. I don't get confused. Yes. Okay, that, that is so much more powerful to me, in my opinion, <laughs> than the heel thing. Yeah, okay. I think that's way more powerful. I love them both. I eat it all up. I'm the target market. Ding, this is a you fun got dynamic me. We've got. Yeah, yeah. So. But I love her. Yeah, me too. Um, team Team Haley for sure. And but we I'm, will I'm see. Be interested to see what actually she runs on. Yes, she really needs to. I don't know. I will she say like she need. I will say you know to give her a slight critique. She does need to be a little bit more clear about yes. like what her platform yes. is going to be. Oh yeah. Um, I don't even think she knows. I think her platform right now, Nikki. If you hear this, I'm not trying to critique you. I still um, love you, but I think right now her platform is: I'm not Donald Trump. I'm a woman. Mm. I'm young and I'm a woman. Or DeSantis. Or DeSantis. Well, I think she hasn't really said anything about DeSantis. I think all of her attacks have kind of been Donald Trump. Because she, I haven't really seen many attacks on Trump. Well, not necessarily attacts, but like, for example, the 75. DeSantis, or um, she said 75 is the cutoff. Um, by the time oh. he becomes president, he'd be 76. So, like, that's... She could have no, no, no. Sorry, Trump. Okay, yeah. So she yeah. said she wants the mental co- the thing Got when it. you're seventy five, mm. and he's seventy six now. So she could have said eighty, yeah. and it would have still hit Biden, but it wouldn't have hit Trump. And Trump has said he hasn't necessarily attacked her, but he said stuff like, "Oh yeah, girl, run, wink, oh. wink." So it's kind of oh. like, which is kind of rude, that but is. like you know, it's again Nikki. I'm not trying to critique, but right now her platform does seem to be, I am young and i'm a woman i'm younger and i'm a woman um but you know we know that and of color and or a, a, a woman of color yeah, yeah yeah but we do know that she is pro-life she has oh, signed right. bills to um completely eradicate abortion in south carolina so that's something that totally we can get behind um so she does have conservative republican pro-life views she also did something with getting rid of the Confederate flag or a Confederate statue in yes. the state of South Carolina, yes. which was not popular on her base. Not popular amongst a lot of conservative Republicans, but I believe popular among young Republicans. Yes. Um. So it's going to be quite a race. It's going to be really fascinating. Yes. I'm excited though. Yeah. Like I just, I hope we can pick a good, Ballot candidate mm-hmm. that can get us over so we can get rid of Joe Biden. That's I need to be rid of like the last fifteen years politically. Fifteen, yeah. I mean if we can get yeah. I just want to start even because I started voting. This was like my first election. I'm so sorry. I'm like it's not normally like Oh this. my gosh. Yeah, this is <laughs> I'm like, does everyone have 
a, a like a suicidal time trying to vote. No. And what's so crazy is I remember. So my first election technically was the 2016 election. Okay. I remember doing that, and I remember it was just so intense. Mm-hmm. I remember the day after um, President Trump was elected. I remember he. Uh, I remember that day. It was it rained. I was in New Jersey. I was living in New Jersey, mm-hmm. and it rained, and everybody just was like so sad. I remember that day in Seattle for twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Okay, and I just remember thinking like, okay, it's not the end of the world. It was just so weird. Yeah. And it just seems like politics has just been so different. And I was, I've always been interested in Oh, wait, politics. no, I meant 2016. Why did okay. I say 2020? I don't know. I would, just went along with it. Maybe I did mean 2020. I don't know. I do remember that day. 2016, though, you were probably... I was in high school. Okay, yeah. So, like, um, but I've always been interested in politics, but I just feel like after that, everyone and their grandmother started being interested in I politics. I completely hear you. Yeah. I remember, I do remember that day for me in my high school, and it was very drab, and I was in Seattle. Um, I remember a we girl- We were both in pretty uh, liberal areas. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't really know what I identified as politically. Also, how much time do we have? Oh, we're good. We're okay. good. We'll just do one more story. Uh, we'll just skip to the last one. Yeah, I didn't really know what I thought of politically, but I remember being like, I'm not really on board with being like clinically depressed over this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and you know, we'll wrap this segment up, but I just want to remind everybody like, the president is just like ahead. We have kind of got, I feel like we've gone yes. way too far off like Commander what their Chief. role. Yeah, that's it. Period. So, like, and not only that, your local elections are so much more important. Yeah. yeah. That really matters. So if you can just get involved on a local level, who your mayor is, who your uh, mm. state rep is, mm. who your um, state person. Yeah, your congressperson. All that stuff is so much more important. Yeah. So if you can kind of focus on that and yeah. just not get bogged down. And no matter what, Jesus is king. Oh. Jesus is still on the throne. So like, yeah, like do not put office, your trust in any yeah. human being. Yeah, no matter who wins at the end of the day, it I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but like once, you know, this is just a blimp. At the end of two years, years are just yeah. a blimp on, you know, eternity if you're mm-hmm. with Christ. You know, we're going to be here for eternity. Just a, a little blimp. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. Yeah, it's hard. I'm not going to sit here and act like, um, you know, the economy is doing well right now. It's not. So mm-hmm. it matters in that, in that sense, but like the grand mm-hmm. scheme. As uh, I have a friend who says, when you zoom out, yeah, <laughs> it really doesn't matter. I love that you said that because it can be so tempting to feel like this is the end all be all. Yeah, this election is it, and it's like if my candidate doesn't win, then it's over. The whole I'm world moving. Is, yeah, I'm moving. Yeah, and it's not. It's not like that. Um, yeah, I love that you reminded us of that. Yeah. Thank you for that context. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Last story because we're running out of time. Um, it is brought to you by Garnu. Garnu is a girls only organic tampon brand. You can use the code other girls to get 10% off www.garnu.com. Amen. Okay. So this next one is by NPR and really quick how I found out about the story is because Spotify has this thing called your daily drive. If you listen to Spotify, use your daily drive. So what it is, it's like 15 minutes. It's, an, it's called, mm, what is the program called? I think it's called Up First. Oh, I've heard of Up First. Yes. I have it on like it's Apple Podcasts. NPR. Oh, okay. Yeah. Apple Podcasts or something like that too. Oh, cool. Oh my gosh. All the adversity. Yeah. So um, with Spotify, let me just really clear. I kind of want to show. Is it this one? Yep. It's Up. Yeah. So I do like Up First. Your daily drive is this, is this. So, like, it gives oh. you what the day is, and then... It's Thursday. It's th- it tells you, it literally says, it's Thursday. Here's your daily drive for Thursday. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> so, I'll listen to that, and then, um, I guess because it's late. Oh, yeah, because it's after 8, it says NPR News. But normally, it's um, up first. Yep. And I want to say a couple days ago, that was one of the... this. Okay. With one of the stories. Okay, so I was like, oh, it. this is interesting. Let's hear it. So this story is brought to you by NPR. And I feel like nobody's really talking about this, but I, I want us to be the people to talk about it. Yeah. 
the Supreme Court showdown for Google, Twitter, and the social media world. In November 2015, ISIS terrorists carried out a coordinated attack across Paris, killing 130 people and injuring 400. I remember this. Among the dead was Nehomi Gonzalez. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that name. A 23-year-old American studying abroad who was the first person in her large family to graduate from college. Wow. This week, lawyers for her family and others are in the Supreme Court challenging a new law enacted more than a quarter century ago, a law that protects social media companies from what family sees as a role of the internet companies in aiding and abetting terrorist attacks. Whoa. How the court rules could be a game changer for American law, society, and social media platforms that are some of the most valuable businesses in the world. Yep. What the law says. At the center of two cases to be argued over two days is Section 230 of the 1996 Communications Decency Act, passed by Congress when the internet platforms were just beginning. In just 26 words, Section 230 draws a distinction between interactive computer service providers and other purveyors of information, whereas newspapers and broadcasters can be sued for defamation and other wrongful conduct. Section 230 says that websites are not publishers or speakers and cannot be sued for material that appears on those sites. Mm. Essentially, the law treats web platforms the same way that it treats the telephone. And just like telephone companies, websites that are host to speakers cannot be sued for what the speakers say or do. Mm. At least that is the way the lower courts have uniformly interpreted Section 230. They have said that under the law, social media companies are immune from being sued for civil damages over the over most material that appears on their platform. That is so, even though at the same time, the law has an apparently contrary objective. It encourages social media companies to remove material that is obscene, lewd, excessively violent, harassing, or otherwise objectable. Okay. That's they, tough. Yeah. This is so tough. I feel like people are not really talking about this as much as I think they should. And this can really shape how we use the internet. Yeah. It can shape how, you know, even Facebook groups, I feel like. Um, but you can, you want to go first to kind of discuss how you feel? Well, this has been a really big problem. I don't think that, like, our society is ready for all mm-hmm. the technology that's coming. And no. now we've got, like... I mean, genetically, we're not ready for all yes. this technology. Like, our bodies can't handle it. Our brains can't handle it. And so, first of all, I just want to say I do not have any – I could never imagine the kind of pain that yeah. this Gonzalez family is experiencing. Yeah. I and, mean, those, and everybody else in the lawsuit, too. It's so sad. Yeah. Yeah. That is just – that is I, – I can't even imagine. And I won't even – I won't even say I understand. I won't yeah. even say that – like, that absolutely needs to be addressed before we go into, like, what we think about the case. Yeah. Um Good point. Controversial take, though, as much as I deeply, deeply despise this incident, I do not think it is the social media's business to be moderating these things. Also, wait, sorry, I forgot to add this. This wasn't in the article, but in something else I heard they were saying they're they were, part of the reason like they were suing YouTube specifically was because, you know, when you watch different things with YouTube, the algorithm yes. shows you more and yes. more. So they were saying, like, YouTube's kind of responsible for continuing to show all these kids that are getting involved with, like, terrorism, showing keep showing them things that support their terrorism. That, yeah, that is crazy. I've seen something where, like, you can literally go from, like, watching cat videos to, like, being in a conspiracy theory and, like, yeah. videos. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So, um, sorry, continue what you were saying. Yeah. So you just don't think they should be held responsible. Well, I, I definitely like, it's really tricky because there's yeah. never going to be a fair. Yeah. Because someone is going to get censored. Yeah. And, you know, I've been on the receiving end of censoring on Instagram and that mm. really, really sucks. But businesses, independent and private businesses, can refuse service to anyone. Yeah. Just like 
a Christian fake shop owner yeah. can res- refuse service to a gay couple. Yeah, yeah. That's within their right. And yeah. not that it, you know, everyone somewhere is going to be hurt. Yeah. So we just kind of need to find what's the least, what's the worst of two evils. Yeah. I don't know. What yeah. do you think, Mallory? I agree with you. I think that, like, the social media can't necessarily be held accountable for that, for what goes on there. I I mean, this is maybe not even the same, but what I'm thinking of is, let's say, um, the app. Mm-hmm. We're working on an app for the podcast and, like, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So there's, like, a social aspect of the app, and someone starts saying, oh, all Christians are evil and uh, some... I'm sorry, I'm kicking you off. Yeah. And, like, starts being, like, rude and, sure. like, abusive and, like, mm-hmm. not abusive, but, like... Um, aggressive. Aggressive. Yeah. Like, I'm kicking you off. I don't yeah. want you in our space. So, like, I... So, there's, like, a part of me that's kind of, like, that agrees. Like, so you should not be... Like, people should be able to do whatever they want. A private company should kick people off or let pe- things keep going. Yeah. It should not be held responsible for that. The other part of me is, like... They absolutely have a moral obligation. It's a moral, morally, I guess that's where it is. Yeah. Um, Moral versus versus legal. legal. Exactly. I think you nailed it on the head. I think legally, like, I don't think they should be held accountable, but morally, like, if you see that happening, you report it. I would do what you can. Cut it down. Like, stop it. Cut it at the roots. Like, if someone started recruiting people on, like, our app, like, report (laughs) FBI. (laughs) So, you know. It's just, it's, I think, I yeah. think it sheds light on like how influential social media is. Yes. Like ter- we're talking a terrorist attack because of social media. And that's so crazy to even think about. And part of, you kind of mentioned it earlier. Part of the problem is we haven't caught up. If you exactly. guys are still watching Law and Order, they talk about that all the time. Mm-hmm. How like, um, criminals are way further down they're creating things and the law is like running trying behind to them. catch up yeah like they're gonna do some you know you yeah uh, perfect i'm um, thinking um child sexual abuse trigger warning mm-hmm. so you know before it was like in someone's house and then you know you yes. can get it online and then you can do back page and then and you know the law is like running behind trying to figure yeah. out how to it's not preventative it's you know yeah. reactive yeah and that's kind of what's going on with technology and everything going on here yeah. It's just a tough situation. It really is a tough situation. And I feel bad, so bad for the family. Yeah. And I, cause I just can't all, imagine. It's have, just, yeah. And I, I'm also thinking like, I, I don't know which way the courts will roll. I, you know, don't know enough about this specific topic mm-hmm. or in, um, in regards to the people, those on the bench. So I don't know yeah. how they feel about it. Yeah. Um, but, the ruling either way is going to be a huge, is going to have some sort of impact, whether they rule yeah. that, yeah, they're not responsible. So then so many other things are happening, or if they rule that they are responsible, that's going to change so many things yeah. because um, it also mentions how in the law, you are also encouraged um, to remove obscene, lewd, excessively violent, harassing, or otherwise objectable yeah. um, things. So, you know, if, Social media companies can start being responsible for stuff like that. Talk about censorship. I mean, I know. I know. <laughs> nobody, you could just, yeah, hey, you we're, know what? We're done. We're not going to have a podcast. I mean, low key. And not only that, though, we might, on Instagram, though, it might be okay because it might just go back to us taking pictures of our, like, our food and, like, yeah. just random pictures at the mall because you can't say anything. Yeah. But, you know, stuff like this, I mean, Join our Patreon. Like, yeah. that's what it's going to end up being. A bunch of like, private stuff. Because, um, yeah. And, I mean, think about um, the guy in Australia who said he watched, um, like, Candace Owens, Tucker Carlson. And he said he that's why he went and murdered Uh-oh. someone. Oh so, like, gosh. yeah. And we don't have to get into them. But, like, yeah. that... I mean, well, so many other things. Like, he could maybe even sue YouTube yeah. for corrupting him. You know, like, there's yeah. just so many things. Like, so much censorship that could happen from this one decision. So, we're going to keep an eye on this. I want to do – I wonder if we can get someone on who can, like, yeah. know a little bit more about this legally. If you know someone 
who knows a little bit more about this and like can talk in more depth about that reach out let me know or if you know yeah um because i want to keep an eye on this like how this is ruled i think there know are a few like july about this sort of thing that are happening so it yeah will be really there's a lot of technology stuff coming up because i mean like we said the law is catching up with it yeah. they're reactionary yeah when things happen then they have to start figuring out oh, how does this because people are smart can't get past people um okay i think that's it okay i hope you guys enjoyed this episode yeah if you did please make sure you rate review like subscribe however you're listening to it if you're on apple Podcasts, please 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 leave us a rating and leave us a review tell us how much you enjoyed it and um that you want to tell all your friends about it if you're listening on spotify answer our question for the week um what should the question for the week be? How much nudity is too much? Nudity? Yes. How much nudity do you think is too much nudity? Um, if ooh. any. Yeah. Well, well okay. I assume you all think there's just such thing as too much. Yeah. But is it... Like, what about artistic nudity? What's the sweet spot for you? Yeah. Like, art, like, I'm thinking of the Roman yeah. statue. We'll figure out. This is not a question the way we're saying it. We'll figure it out. You'll see it on the Spotify. Um, so answer the question on the Spotify. Leave a rating. Um, and then however else you listen to it, please interact. Um, however they want you to listen to it. I don't really know how else other platforms ask you, but please do it. Um, and then um, I guess that's it. Get your tickets for the tea. If totally. you have questions or anything, please reach out. Mm-hmm. Love to answer questions. And I guess that's it. Have a great day, however, wherever you are listening. Bye.